Have you ever had a hard time changing your way of life because you are worried what others will think or that it will make you look weak or maybe even wrong? Allah sends for us an example of a ruler who didn't let her ego get in the way of the truth. Meet Bilqis, Queen of Saba or Queen of Sheba. She ruled over a kingdom on the Southern Arabian Peninsula in what is now known as Yemen. Bilqis was a rich and powerful queen, yet she and her people worshiped the sun and other idols. Unbeknownst to her, there existed a more powerful ruler, Prophet Suleiman alayhi salam. And the Quran mentions many miracles and blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had bestowed upon him. He could understand the speech of animals, had the power of the wind, and despite his worldly powers, he never forgot Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and was always grateful to him. Suleiman alayhi salam had an army of birds, jinn, and humans, and amongst his army was the hoopoe bird, or the hudhud, which one day was absent without his consent, which made Prophet Suleiman alayhi salam unhappy. The hoopoe bird returned, however, with some exciting news and an explanation. He had been scouting in areas where Suleiman alayhi salam's army had not yet reached. The hudhud reported that the kingdom of Saba was ruled by a queen, and that the people of that kingdom worshipped the sun and other idols. Therefore, Prophet Suleiman sent the hudhud with a letter to the queen, greeting her and requesting her to submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The hudhud flew through the window of her palace, dropped the letter in front of her. And upon receiving the letter, Bilqis consulted with her advisors. When she read Suleiman letter to them and consulted with them about this news, they said, we have great strength and great ability for war, but it is for you to command. So think over what you will command us to do. Bilqis had the full authority to declare war. However, she chose a more diplomatic approach, where she decided to send a huge collection of expensive gifts to Suleiman alayhi salam. Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu said, she said to her people, if he accepts the gift, he is a king, so fight him. But if he does not accept it, he is a prophet, so follow him. Subhanallah. Prophet Suleiman alayhi salam, however, rejected her gifts and said that the gifts which he had received from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala were infinitely better than those which he had sent. He sent the messengers back with the gifts and had them deliver a new message to Bilqis, that either she submits to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or he would send armies which would destroy the whole of Saba and its people. When Bilqis saw that her gifts were returned, she then knew that Suleiman alayhi salam was a prophet. So she accepted the message of Tawheed and left her palace with her army to honor Suleiman alayhi salam and to learn his religion. Prophet Suleiman alayhi salam wanted to further display the gifts he had been granted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by bringing her very expensive and elaborate throne to his palace before she arrived. So he asked his army, which one of you can bring me her throne? A jinn offered to bring it to him before Suleiman would even leave his seat. And another man who had knowledge of the book said he could bring the queen's throne in the blink of an eye. When the throne had been placed before Suleiman alayhi salam, he praised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and thanked him. Suleyman then had the queen's throne disguised so that Bilqis couldn't recognize it right away. When she arrived, she was asked whether it was her own throne and she said it looked like it. Then as Bilqis was asked to enter the palace, she noticed that the floor was shiny and looked like it was water. So she lifted up her skirt thinking there was a pool of water to walk through. Some of the Mufassirin said that Prophet Suleyman built a huge palace of glass for Bilqis in order to show her the greatness of his kingdom and power. When she saw for herself what Allah had given him and how majestic his position was, she proclaimed her faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to whom she had already submitted to before she even left her kingdom. She said, Rabbi inni dhalamtu nafsi wa aslamtu ma Sulaymana lillahi rabbil alameen. My Lord, verily I have wronged myself and I submit together with Sulaiman to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Lord of all that exists. Bilqis, queen of Saba, was a wise ruler. She ruled over a powerful kingdom and had a group of advisors that respected her authority and wisdom. She had everything she could have possibly wanted, but she didn't let that get in the way of her ego when she was invited to the truth by Suleiman alayhi salam. She could have thought, I don't want my people to think I'm weak for changing our religion to that of another ruler, but instead she did the right thing. She followed the right path. She didn't fear losing her wealth or power. Instead, she put her faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by leaving her palace to personally accept the invitation of Prophet Suleiman in his palace. Her willingness to change also gained her the reward of all of her people who followed the religion of Tawheed because of her leadership. We learn from Bilqis' example that to be a real leader, to show real strength, it is to do the right thing and follow the straight path.